Now at 6, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good evening and thanks for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 6. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Bridget Bjorlo. We are following developing news tonight in Plymouth where a plane crashed into a campground. Now, right now emergency crews are still on scene working to remove the wreckage and clean up fuel from that plane. Fox 61's Matt Karen is in Plymouth to tell us why this could have been a lot worse. Well, it was around 11 a.m. here at Gentiles Campground, a very quiet morning until, well, it wasn't. All of a sudden, an aircraft being flown by a student pilot came crashing through the treetops, flipped over, and came to a rest right there behind us, just feet away from electrical wires and families camping. I'm grateful. Someone up there is watching me. <laughs> Still shaken up from what she witnessed. Joanne York didn't want us to show her face, but she did share her story. We just stepped off the deck and it sounded like M80s. And then all of a sudden we heard this big crash and I thought maybe a camper tipped over. But it wasn't a camper. It was a plane. We're not sure if they were trying to land, but that's the possibility. And it hit the trees and came down in the middle of the campgrounds. In the middle of the campground, just feet away from occupied RVs, propane tanks, and the main electrical source. It shook the ground. It could have been very much a disaster here. The only one in the aircraft, a student pilot. She was initially trapped in the mangled metal. Rescued by campgoers and first responders, seriously injured, but conscious and alert. It could have been tragic. The airspace overhead is a popular flight path with a small private airport just down the road. A situation not unique to first responders. So this is not uncommon here for us. We've had them right behind us down in the Boy Scout camp. We've had several in the last 10 years, probably five planes go down. You just never expect one to fall out of the sky feet away from your family. Too close to home. Yeah. Too close to home. The FAA, the NTSB, they're both on scene in order to investigate and figure out how this plane actually crashed. And Connecticut environmental officials, they are also here in order to assist in cleaning up the nearly 60 gallons of high octane aviation fuel that spilled out of the aircraft. Reporting in Plymouth, Matt Karen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Matt, thank you. New at 6, a school in Milton was placed in secure mode today for reports of a hand grenade on school property. Police responded to Middlebrook School this afternoon. The device was discovered near the batting cages far away from the actual school building. The bomb squad responded, ruling out the threat, saying the device was hollow, not active. The lockdown was lifted a short time later and classes were able to resume as normal. Also new here at 6, roads are closed right now in Willimantic after a dump truck truck rolled over. Take a look at this. This is near West Main Street and Columbia Avenue and you can see there's at least one car involved here and dirt all over the road. This is going to take a long time just to clean up. No word on what caused the truck to end up on its side or if there's anyone hurt. We are still waiting to learn that information. Well, we are staying on it and we'll bring you the latest information as soon as we learn it. And the investigation continues tonight into what caused a crash in Wolcott over the weekend that left an 18-year-old dead and four other teens injured. It happened on Spindle Hill Road Saturday night. Police say the car went off the road and hit a tree. We talked with neighbors who say the crash happened in a dangerous area. And we'll have more coming up at 6.30. In West Haven, police say a child on a school field trip had a close call at Sea Bluff Beach this morning. But thanks to quick action from a chaperone and a woman on the beach, she is expected to be okay. Fox 61's Julia LeBlanc has that story. Hi, good evening to you both. Yeah, we spoke off camera with the bystander this morning who tells us it was her and a school chaperone that sprung into action this morning, saving this little girl's life. Now this after they noticed she was struggling in this water. Scary, very scary. A terrifying moment for a 10 year old girl on a field trip at Sea Bluff Beach in West Haven Monday morning. Likely a life was saved here today. Uh, could have been a very tragic incident uh, at the beach this morning. Rick Fontana, West Haven's Director of Emergency Operations, says the East Rock student may have had a piece of candy in her mouth while in the water and started choking. She then uh, obviously stopped breathing, uh, was went under the water, 
uh, was pulled from the water here uh, to the beach and uh, CPR was initiated by, uh, by one of the chaperones. Fox 61 spoke off camera with a bystander on the beach who says she performed mouth to mouth on the student who eventually came to and was taken to the hospital. That's amazing, but I mean, I wouldn't expect anything less from our community. As a nanny, Ashley Charalusi is using this as a teachable moment for the toddler she watches. So we have to make sure we can always see someone, right? We always want to be able to see someone. Charalusi says she's always on high alert when by the water with the kids, especially after noticing this beach isn't covered by a lifeguard right now. I feel like having someone here around all day would probably be better. Yeah, it definitely would have helped earlier in that situation. It's something the city is working on, staffing the shoreline with lifeguards on the weekends and making the switch over to full seven day coverage come the week of June 23rd. I think the message is, look, uh, the beaches are not always covered by a lifeguard. And in places without coverage, Fontana says every adult needs to pay attention, especially in a place like this where the tide moves quickly. We want you to enjoy a beautiful beach, but there are some safety tips. You know, make sure you don't take your eyes off of anyone that's in that water. Now, Fontana says that chaperone performing CPR right away was crucial in those moments trying to save that little girl's life, though first responders did respond within two minutes of getting the call. Now, Fontana recommends everybody learns how to perform CPR because you never know when you will need that life-saving measure. We're live here in West Haven tonight. Julia LeBlanc, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Great tips there, Julia. Thank you. Time now for a check on the forecast. I got outside this weekend and I learned the hard way. You got to wear a lot of sunscreen out there. The yep. sun's strong. It gets hot yeah. even here in Connecticut up in the north, doesn't you know. it? Uh, Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank joining us now with uh, more on the rest of the week. It's been summery, Rach. Yeah, and it will continue to be as we head through the next couple of days. We're even going to add the humidity to the mix as well. Starting Wednesday and especially Thursday of this week, we've got two more dry days, though, before showers and storms return. Right now it's 80 degrees right down to the shoreline. We're looking at the New Haven temperature 86 in Hartford. And here's a look at temperatures statewide coolest in Groton. But I think the whole shoreline will be cooler tomorrow compared to today with the wind coming out of the south. Water temperature still only in the 50s to near 60 degrees. Here's a look at the satellite and radar and there's obviously nothing really to show you here close to home. But as we head through the evening tonight, if you wanted to grill on the deck and do some barbecuing or go for a walk with the dog as long as you don't mind the warmth. It's a great evening for that. And we're looking at overnight lows that will be dipping back into the 50s to right around 60 degrees. So 50s to near 60 overnight tomorrow, partly cloudy. We're going to shave a few degrees off the high temperature inland. We're looking at highs in the low 80s and we'll be about 10 degrees cooler than inland areas at the shoreline tomorrow, lower 70s as we head through the afternoon. Again, two more dry days. We'll time out that rain for later this week coming up. We'll enjoy the sun while it lasts. Thanks, Rachel. Today, the town of Southington held a moment of silence in honor of Trooper First Class Aaron Pelletier. He died after being hit by a truck during a traffic stop on I-84 last week. Today, dozens of people gathered at a funeral home in Southington at exactly 2.36 this afternoon. You see the crowd gathered there along with his pictures at a memorial site. The 2.36 time is the exact moment State Trooper Aaron Pelletier was killed last Thursday. Over the weekend, a number of tributes took place including the fallen hero's own young son throwing out the first pitch at a baseball game. A Connecticut state trooper hit and killed in the line of duty, remembered by the community he took an oath to protect and serve. You know, it's really hard when you see something like this of someone in your own town. It really hits you harder. It's hard to believe and we feel very bad for the family. We can't imagine what they're going through. 34 year old Aaron Pelletier died while conducting a traffic stop along I-84 in Southington Thursday. He leaves behind a wife and two young sons, one of them honoring his dad this weekend at Duncan Park in Hartford, throwing out the first pitch for the yard goats. Baseball fans giving a standing ovation to the Pelletier family. 
In Southington, schools will close on Tuesday for the wake of the fallen trooper and will dismiss early on Wednesday for his funeral. It's planned to be held at this funeral home where a memorial grows in honor of Pelletier's service and sacrifice. People traveling from across the state to lay flowers, hang balloons, and even drop off this wooden statue of the trooper's canine partner. Jan Kraus is an EMT and says this tragedy hits too close to home. It just breaks my heart to see a fellow first responder unfortunately pass away in the line of duty like this. It just happens too often, you know. This is like the fourth officer in Connecticut, I believe, that side in line of duty in the last two years. The tributes also pouring in online, where hundreds took out their checkbooks to support the Pelletier family. A GoFundMe page surpassing $400,000, with organizers hoping to raise a half million by the end of the week. Tonight, we are learning new details about the fallen troopers' wake and funeral. There will be a private viewing time for family and friends tomorrow afternoon, followed by a calling hours for law enforcement tomorrow night. Then on Wednesday, the funeral will take place at 11 a.m. at the Xfinity Theater in Hartford. Everyone is welcome and doors open at 9. A private burial will take place at the St. Thomas Cemetery after the fact. And we have all of this information on our website, fox61.com. Well, two people are dead after a motorcycle crash in Bridgeport. Police say Carlos Gianparo Rodriguez and Diego Suarez were riding the motorcycle on Stratford Avenue yesterday around 6 p.m. when they were hit by an SUV that was attempting to turn onto the road. Both were pronounced dead at the hospital. The driver of the SUV was not injured. The passenger had minor injuries. And the incident remains under investigation tonight. And another accident to tell you about, a crash involving a motorcycle left one person with serious injuries. This happened last night in Southington. Police found the victim at the intersection of South Main and Mulberry Streets. They say the motorcycle crashed into the car as it was attempting to make a left turn. The driver of the motorcycle taken to the hospital with serious injuries. The driver of the car not injured. Anyone with information on this crash is asked to call police. And new here at 6, a federal judge has rejected a request to immediately shut down conspiracy theorist Alex Jones's media company, Free Speech Systems, as disputes in his bankruptcy cases widen. Families of the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting victims had asked for a judge to liquidate that media company immediately, but the judge ruled it can continue operating until June 14th, when the judge is expected to make a decision in Jones's bankruptcy case. Jones and the company filed for bankruptcy reorganization after he lost two lawsuits and was ordered to pay the families $1.5 billion.